Hi, thanks for joining me. Today I've got this really bizarre looking infinite series problem. We want to work out the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of f of n divided by e plus root 2 to the power of pi times the floor of log base 10 of n. And here f of n is simply the product of the digits of n when we look at n in written in base 10. And now somehow we're supposed to work out what this is as a value, despite the fact that it has an e in it, a root 2 in it, a pi in it, a floor function, uh, a logarithm, base 10, this bizarre function f of n, which is a product of the digits of n, and also the fact that it's not a finite series, it's in fact an infinite series, and still somehow we can work out the value of this. Okay, so if you want to have a go at this problem, pause the video now and give it a go for yourself, and I'm going to dive straight into a solution. Okay, so we're going to start our solution by kind of rewriting uh, the problem itself, or just writing it in shorthand. We're going to let g of x be the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of f of n divided by x to the power of the floor of log base 10 of n. And of course, our goal, therefore, is to work out what g evaluated at e plus root 2 to the power of pi is. So just swapping the x with this number here. And now you might think that this is just kind of a random number, but there is an important property about this number, which means we can actually work out what this sum is. But we'll come back to that property at the end. So let's just have a play with this sum over here and see what we can do with it. And so first thing we notice is within our sum or our summoned, we've got this floor function. And 99 times out of 100, whenever you're dealing with either the sum of something that involves a floor function or the integral of something that involves a floor function, you want to split your sum or your integral up uh, based upon the different values that the floor can take. So we know that the floor of anything has to be an integer. And so we've got the floor of log base 10 of n, and that can be anything from uh, zero all the way up to, well, arbitrarily high. So we ask ourselves, when is log base 10 of n, or the floor of it, a constant? And then we realize that that's going to be when log base 10 of n, or sorry, when n itself is has a fixed number of digits. So what we do is we're going to split our summation up based upon the number of digits that n has. So I'm going to let SL be the positive integers with L digits. And again, this whole problem, we're working base 10. So when I say it has L digits, I mean it has L digits um, when you write it in base 10. So the positive integers, which have L digits, L digits. So for example, S1 would just be one, two, all the way up to nine. I mean, I could include zero here, but because our sum starts from one, I'll just exclude it for now. S2 would be 10, 11, all the way up to 99, and so on. So S2 is the two-digit numbers, S3 is the three-digit numbers, and so on. Okay, now why does this mean that this floor thing is a, is a constant? Uh, or at least it's a constant within SL. So if n is in SL, what is the value of the floor of log base 10 of n? Well, I claim that it's going to be L minus 1. And it's probably just best to illustrate this with an example. So suppose n equals 10,003, for example. So it would be an S5, because it has five digits in. Then what is log base 10 of n? Well, it's going to be bigger than or equal to the log base 10 of 10,000. And log base 10 of 10,000 would be 4. Because remember, log base 10 of a power of 10 is simply the number of zeros after the 1. But it's obviously going to be less than log base 10 of 100,000, and that would be 5. And so when I take the floor of this guy, it's obviously going to give me 4, which is 1 less than 5. And in general, if n is in SL, then as I say over here, the floor of log base 10 of n is going to be L minus 1. And so if I go back to g of x, I can now split this sum as the sum from L being bigger than or equal to 1 of the sum of n in SL, because obviously the different values of SL, uh, sorry, the, for the different values of L, SL is going to partition the integers, the positive integers that is. Um, so I can write this as a double sum of f of n divided by x to the floor of log base 10 of n, but we know the floor of log base 10 of n is just L minus 1 from this guy here. And now if I focus on this sum, I see that 1 over x to the l minus 1 is a constant, so I can bring it out. So this is simply the sum 
from L being bigger than or equal to 1 of 1 over x to the power of L minus 1 times the sum of n in SL of f of n. So now what I want to do is see if I can work out what this is and then I can work back and see if I can work out a value for this infinite sum. Okay, so we've shown that g of x equals this thing here, and as I said, the next thing we want to focus on is this finite sum at the end, the sum of n in SL of f of n. And we can do that by noticing that, well, this is simply the sum of the products of all the digits in the numbers which have L digits in them. And so we have a think about this for a moment. And then we consider this expansion here. If I think of 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus all the way up to 9, and I raise that to the power of L, this in fact is going to equal this thing here. And now why is this true? Well, if I take any number n from SL, so let, let's use a 10,003 example again, which is in S5, then what would f of, uh, f of n be? Well, it's just going to be 0, because I'm going to multiply these digits together, and obviously it's 0. But another way of thinking about this is it's 1 times 0 times 0 times 0 times 3. And so if L is 5, what I can do is take a 1 from the first bracket, a 0 from the second bracket, a 0 from the, the third bracket, a 0 from the fourth bracket, and a 3 from the final bracket, and that would constitute my f of n. Okay, now let's take an example where f of n isn't 0. So let's say we take m equals, I don't know, 1, sorry, 12,345. For example, then obviously f of m would be the product of the digits, so 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5, so 5 factorial, which is 120. Um, but that's not the important thing. The important thing is how we can get it from this expansion. And as well, we can say that f of m would be, we take a 1 from the first bracket, a 2 from the second bracket, a 3 from the third bracket, a 4 from the fourth bracket, and a 5 from the final fifth bracket. And this will give us our f of m. And so you can see that the sum of n and sl of f of n is simply this number here, 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus all the way up to 9 raised to the power of L. Because when you think of uh, writing L of these brackets next to one another and then going through the process of expanding them out, you're going to get um, all the, t the, number of, the number of terms you're going you're gonna to get is the same as the number of L digit numbers you get, each one corresponding to the product of the digits. Okay, so I can replace this with this thing here. Well, what is 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus all the way up to 9? It's simply going to be 45. So this whole thing here simply becomes g of x, the sum from L being bigger than or equal to 1, of 1 over x to the L minus 1, multiplied by 45 to the L. And so I can write this thing here as 45 times the sum from L being bigger than or equal to 1 of um, 45 over x to the power of l minus 1. And now this is a geometric series, so I should be able to evaluate this. Now we've got to be careful here, when can we evaluate this? We have to make sure that our, uh, our common ratio term has absolute value less than 1. So if we're just dealing with positive x, which is fine for this problem, we need to ensure that x is strictly bigger than 45. So if I put that here, we need x to be bigger than 45 for this to work. And so what is this thing here? It's 45 times, what's the common ratio? It's just going to be 45 over x. So 1 over 1 minus 45 over x, like so. And if we want to, we can go ahead and try and simplify this. This will be uh, 45 times x all over x minus 45. And so this is precisely what g of x is. It's 45x divided by x minus 45. So a simple rational function. And now remember the, the thing we need to do is work out what g evaluated at e plus root 2 to the power of pi is. So what we can do is just plug in x equals that thing into there. So the answer will be 45 times e plus root 2 to the power of pi all divided by e plus root 2 to the power of pi minus 45. But I did say that there was one special property of this function that we needed to use, and that's the simple fact that this number here is bigger than 45. And now you can check this using a calculator, but in fact you don't need to. You can use the fact that e is bigger than 2.7, uh, root 2 is bigger than 1.4, so when you add those two up you're going to get something that's bigger than 4, and when you raise it to the power of pi, that's 
doing it uh, pi is bigger than 3 so some number that's bigger than 4 to the 3 and that of course is 64 and 64 is definitely bigger than 45 so G, uh, this this number here is definitely bigger than 45 uh, so you can just plug it in and you're going to get some bizarre looking number but you're going to be able to work out what this weird looking sum we had to begin with except without an x we had e plus root 2 obviously e plus root 2 to the power of pi times this thing here so a really bizarre looking sum but the final answer is relatively straightforward and what's quite nice is this number x can realistically be any number you want provided it is bigger than 45. Anyway, I hope this solution has made sense and I hope you have enjoyed it. I quite like solving this problem because it looks bizarre to begin with, but we just use the trick of splitting our sum into uh, summing it over the L digit numbers. Uh, and then after that, it's relatively routine. Anyway, if you have enjoyed this, please do like this video. And if you aren't already, please do consider subscribing as well. There's about 80 to 85% of people watching the videos who aren't quite subscribed. So if you are watching and you've made it this far, hopefully it means you have enjoyed the video. So please do consider subscribing. Anyway, I'm going to stop waffling on now. I will see you in the next one. Have a great day.